at the age of 84, my shoulders don't have quite the ability to bear it much anymore. <laughs> Not as much as you can. Uh, as was indicated, I could even you know, go on uh, on related matters at an enormous length, but except for one introductory anecdotal matter, I'm going to stick to our major topic here, which is the military gay gang. Um, but before that, just as an indication of where things have gone over the uh, somewhat more than half a century that I've been involved in the course of this, uh, I got turned into the whole gay movement for gay movement back in 1957 when I was fired by the government because I was gay. At that point, there was a civil service gay gang, which was fully as rigorously ferociously important as the present military gay ban. Um, I fought that all the way up to the Supreme Court, and in the course of that, I did file an administrative appeal with the chairman of the then Civil Service Commission, which still exists with a new name, now the Office of Personnel. And uh, that appeal, uh, as often happens, bureaucratic uh, procedures, uh, sort of home file. Well, the Civil Service Commission, the OPM, and the Civil Service Commission hiring gay then now has as its director or its chairman an open gay man. The bureaucracy, as it often does, mauled over my appeal. 52 years. <laughs> <laughs> and two months ago, I received a beautiful letter from the chairman of the OPM, apologizing for the shameful, that was his word, action of the Civil Service Commission in 1967. Well, I'm inspired.